Catherine Shavo, and it's like shaver, but with an O, Shavo, is with Clemson's Food Safety <laughs> Nutrition Team, and it's her first time here with us. We were so happy to have her, and um, I am real excited because um, it's getting to be that time of year when there's a lot of color in the landscape, right. and you said color in our diet can be real healthy for us. Absolutely. We know we should eat our fruits and vegetables, and I've got a few more reasons as to why, and hopefully a, a recipe that will help get them down. But we know, you know, color indicates different nutrients in the food. We have, you know, the red. I think most people are aware of but, um, lycopene, and it's. And what um, is lycopene? Lycopene is one of your phytonutrients, uh -huh. which um, thank you very much is one of the compounds that gives color to our food. So oh. chlorophyll gives green color yes. to foods, All right. and we have these other phytonutrients uh, which can give color. Beta carotene is one of them, and. By eating a variety of colors, we get all of the nutrients that are in our food. So we know about vitamins and minerals. We can buy a pill. Yeah, and that's, that, what, we, that has, that's what we used to just think we needed. Right, but now we're discovering that there are these tiny naturally occurring chemicals that help protect plants. They give, uh, provide natural pesticide protection to plants. They will give them a strong odor to keep uh, bugs away or maybe give them bright colors to attract a plant, attract a bug. Well, it sounds like they're good for the plants, but how can they be good for us? Well, they, they confer health benefits on us that work with the other nutrients in the, the, um, the in vegetable the uh -huh. or in the food, yes. Okay. So we eat um, the tomatoes, and I want to talk about how they're processed because if you eat a raw tomato, it's going to be an excellent source of vitamin C. Okay. You may not get much of the lycopene, but you really? turn it into tomato sauce, and then the lycopene becomes more available through the heat processing. The vitamin C is reduced a little bit, but you get that oh. lycopene. So you want to eat fresh, frozen, canned, and dried in your diet, just a not only a variety of colors, mm -hmm. but also a variety of forms to get the most the greatest array of nutrients that you can in your diet. Okay. I think another one that uh, people, we think about bright colors and strong colors, but also we want to pay attention to the pale colors, like our nice celery there. Now, wait a minute. I've always thought that like, celery and cauliflower, although I like them, but that I was, kind of that I probably should be eating a sweet potato instead well, because it had color in it and that there wasn't anything in cauliflower or well, celery. Oh no, ca well cauliflower is one of your brassica vegetables, so they're superstars in the anti-cancer world. Even though they don't have, even, even though they don't have color. The, there's a class of phyto phytochemicals called flavonoids, and those don't have a lot of color to them. So you find the flavonoids in a, in a wide variety of foods, but cauliflower is one. Uh, celery contains one called apinogen, which is being researched to call it as, in its properties that causes death in cancer cells. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. So another good reason okay. to eat your fruits and vegetables. So it sounds like variety is part of the key. Variety too. is the key. Yes. And a lot of some people are against canned foods or think lesser of them. Uh huh. But our canned and frozen are processed very close to where they're picked. There's a short amount of time between the pick and the processing. Oh, a lot of our farmers grow things for contract, and sometimes they're in the can or processed and frozen within the same day they're picked. Right. And so is, there, is that helpful? Oh, that's great. Because oh, uh -huh. you want to reduce the amount of time that a fruit or vegetable is on the shelf because they, uh, the vitamins are volatile. So oh. time, sometimes just time and air will uh -huh. cause like vitamin C to degrade a little bit. And then if you're shipping something from California or Guatemala, that's several days on a truck. It's several days in the grocery store. And you're going to do better buying local conventional produce than getting something fancy from across the world. Well, that's encouraging Isn't to hear because though? that way we're supporting our South Carolina farmers. Yes. So the certified South Carolina grown is a good it's step excellent. to take. Yes. And okay. the other thing about canned foods I th think people don't realize, one, you don't want to just let them sit on the shelf. You want to turn that inventory. Okay. But once the food is canned, it really retains the nutrients quite well. So there's no loss there. But I also don't want to forget my white and my black here, the black beans uh -huh. and the, some of the starchy. The beans are a great group for that. Yes. But Mush, brown mushrooms. Um, so they've got some of those flavonoids. They've got the or, flavonoids or and the phytonutrients as well. You get your sulfur compounds out of your uh, onions I, I and garlic. That. Aren't they great? <laughs> you gotta love them. Um, but I did bring a recipe to help get your uh, vegetables down with. And you said that um, even if it, my, I'm mm -hmm. 65, I have my right. Medicaid card, <laughs> and that it's good for me to eat these, but that right. if I ever get a grandchild, yeah. there's a reason why I should try to get yes. that grandchild to eat these early on. Why is that? Absolutely. The, when we eat fruits and vegetables early on in life, it starts building the stage of a cancer preventative life. Oh. Or, or, and so not, not just cancer, I'm sorry, I'm kind of 
pinning myself in, but all your chronic diseases. So you lay that foundation of health in youth. Okay, well let's figure so, out how we can make yeah, these things taste well, good the, to people who are a little reluctant and to the try it. first thing, I have a little trick here with my dip. My mm -hmm. dip is just these four, five ingredients. It's, uh, I use a low-fat mayonnaise. Yes. I use plain yogurt, and depending on how I'm watching my weight, if yeah. I use no fat or little regular. Bit, yeah. It's un green onions, uh, parsley, and then I've got some garlic and a little bit of Dijon mustard okay. in it. But I have a little trick here. In order to make this dip style, I thicken my yogurt. So I've taken just regular yogurt mm -hmm. and put it in this uh, colander with a uh, coffee filter. Coffee filter. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And so the whey is going to drip oh. off down here. And I left to put a plate over there. If you want to grab that plate, okay. we can, uh, to, I'll move this to here, and then we probably oh, have a better shot of yeah. that. And I understand you drink this. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I've never drank it, but I've put it in um, muffins or pancakes. Well, it's kind of like buttermilk, and it's just okay. the best thing in the world. Okay. And it's, it has a good bit of protein, and there's some nutrients in that, too, so there's no point in throwing it away. But I've, I've, So I have my Greek-style yogurt, as I call it. Okay, there's we're going to pop that in the blender. Well, yeah, a little All bit right. of a trick there. I did well. Wonderful. And so I put my yogurt in first, because it's lightweight, and then... This is just extra yogurt we have. Extra yogurt around. that does, has not been thickened. Okay, here are our green onions. So I've got all the green chopped onions. Up. We've got parsley. parsley. And I know parsley has good things in it for you. Oh, yes. And it's easy to grow. A little low fat mayonnaise. A little low fat mayonnaise. And if, if you have a loved one who's needing to gain weight, you can use uh, full fat yogurt or full and fat regular mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Right. And regular okay. mayonnaise. If you're trying to watch your diet, mm -hmm. use the low fat. My mayonnaise. sister and I are Jack Spratt because she's real skinny. Okay. And, um, <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a while. <laughs> Good one. Okay, so let me move my blender over Alrighty. here and we'll get the lid on it. And it blends up pretty fast. I don't have a long spatula, so let's keep okay. our fingers crossed. That let's see if we got it on let's there. Let's see right. what have we got it on low chop. You want to give it a little bit of a stir? Yeah. Let's. Okay. Come on, Blender, do it your It always works better when you're not on TV. Oh, you can be sure of that. <laughs> okay, let's see if that helped it out a little bit. Well, get one. Well, I may not have my... Oops, burned it out. Put that on there right. There we go. Well, I'm going to have to get me one of those. Well, you know what we're going to do. We're we'll just going to, to we're going to just act like it worked perfectly. There you go. <laughs> and I think what would happen is we drained that yogurt so perfectly. But this, this is the actual finished product. But this is what it looks like, <laughs> yes. And that's why we do this sort of thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> and may I taste it? Absolutely. Okay. And I make you, if you wanted to make this one thinner, you wouldn't drain your yogurt. But it's a nice thick dip that I use both as a dip just at parties. Now, how long can I keep this in the refrigerator? This will last about four or five days in the refrigerator. Mm, the parsley boy. helps keep it a little bit mm. further, and it's strong flavored. I mean, it's not oh, for the faint flavor. of heart. But I'll also take this and I, I make what a what I call a what have you salad. Oh, isn't that fun? And I just use whatever's in, on hand. This happens to be a lima bean. I've got some yellow okay. peppers and onions, and just Terrific. made another little that is so uh, much rainbow fun. in the bowl. Well, Catherine, I am delighted that you came well, and um, had a debut with us. We we'll look forward to having <laughs> you coming back.